you heard that right. Christopher is playing Christmas music this morning. Well, since we have now been worshiping at home for over a month, today's service is like no other. Can you tell by looking at us? It's Holy Humor Sunday, and we thought that we could all use a little humor today, especially since we're still in self-isolation and in our own homes. You might notice today's service is, well, a little upside down, topsy-turvy and backwards. Today's service was recorded a few weeks ago. Due to the quarantine self-isolation, I'll be only telling inside jokes. Well, I also don't want you to see how bad my hair looks by now, so I decided to get a new look. You know, Alicia, I was looking at some of the videos that we've been posting. There's a whole lot of gray under here that wasn't there a year ago. Wonder where that came from. I don't know. So Christopher and I now have the same stylist. <laughs> yeah. Cut me down and I lift up high. I am the life that will never, never die. I'll live in you if you live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be. And I'll lead all in the dance, said he. O oh, laughing light, you are calling us by name. You are calling us to give thanks. You are convincing us to listen carefully. You are challenging us to live justly. You are rejoicing that we share worship and service with other Christians. You are promising us peace within the struggle. You are assuring us life in all its fullness. Amen. Time to be funny, rejoice in the Lord. Let laughter explode and have fun with God's word. For laughter is healing, gives strength to the weak. God loves to see smiles for they Time to be silly, it's good for the soul. Too many are somber, grabbing for control. Let go and let's go. Take time for prayer. Let us pray. O oh Lord, giver of joy and laughter, we thank you for giving us these gifts. For the moments of laughter and unbridled joy you give to us. For opportunities to laugh at ourselves. For the belly laughs of children. For friends and family who love us because of our quirks and not just in spite of them. For artists who give us the opportunity to see the world through the surreal for the courage to smile even when difficulties arise, for those who have hope even when others think there is no hope, 
for saints in the Lord who overflow with laughter and spread your joy to all of us, for the words of Jesus that defy our logical minds, for the woman who finds a lost coin and calls her friends and neighbors to celebrate, for the father of the prodigal son who is willing to look like a fool as he runs to greet his son, for the generosity of the landowner who will pay workers for a whole day's wage when they only worked one hour, for tiny bits of faith that can move entire mountains, for the reality that nothing can live unless it first dies, for the great reversal of the gospel, that the last shall be made first, that the rejected stone became the cornerstone, that those who wish to become great must serve, that the lost will be found and the small will become great, that though you are wisdom, you choose to forget our faults that when we are weak, you, your strength shines through us. O oh Lord, giver of joy and laughter, we thank you for giving us these gifts. Thank you for the gift you give us that allows us to enjoy these things to the full. We can laugh because of the most amazing thing of all, that you conquer death, that the tomb is empty, that light shone so bright that it overcame the darkness. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. A little moment of laughter. How many Christians does it take to change a light bulb? How many, Alicia? At least 15. One to change the light bulb, two or three committees to approve the change, and also one to provide a casserole. Ha! Huh. But we can't have casseroles right now to share. No, we can't. And I can just imagine your head shaking and eye rolling at home. I know, I'm not a comedian. This Sunday at St. David's, we decided to celebrate Holy Humor Sunday. Even though we don't normally do that, it might be the first. It's tradition that goes way back to the earliest Greek churches with a lot of different titles. Laughter Sunday, Hilarity Sunday, Bright Sunday, or Holy Fools Sunday. Participants would tell jokes, pull pranks, party, dance, and wear their brightest clothes during the first week after Easter. Kind of why we decided the clown wig might be a good look for the day. Never thought I would lead service wearing a clown wig. Early theologians eventually explained this behavior as perfectly understandable because God had the last laugh when Jesus was raised. What I can tell you about humor in the Bible, well, it's found from the beginning to the end. Not only is the Bible full of puns and images that provoke smiles as we hear them, we come to see God as having a sense of humor, as playing with the opportunities that we create for God. There are a lot of words we use to describe God. Creator, omnipotent, all-powerful, Lord, loving, present, all-knowing, all-seeing, ruler, amazing, victorious, wonderful, and the list goes on. Many of them come from our understanding of God revealed in the stories of scripture and of course our own experiences of the divine. And yet, with this immersed vocabulary and wealth of resources, there is one word I think we don't often include in our list of acclamations of who God is, funny. If such an adjective strikes you as odd, you're probably asking, does God have a sense of humor? If so, what does that even mean? Our image of God tends to be more serious, more stoic, more dignified than a God, than a God who rolls around giggling. And yet, over and over again, scripture tells us about a God who sends out God's people with shouts of joy and jubilation. To be filled with such joy must mean that there's also brightness and a lightheartedness to God. And given the immense playfulness of the works of God's hands, I would argue that God has got a funny bone or two. Take a look at creation. From the aardvark to a colorful array of flowers, God has this creative touch that crosses over into whimsy or even ridiculousness. 
given God's interaction with people throughout the biblical narrative, I would also argue that God has to have a good sense of humor in order to put up with all these ridiculous ways that humankind has created. Laughter has the most powerful way to move our lives forward, even in the midst of difficult times. Laughter is a holy way, a holy act that connects us to one another and also to God. Have you ever stood with a family and friend mourning the loss of a loved one? My experience is that almost without fail, stories will start to be shared that erupt into laughter, that erupt into smiles, which breaks through this tension of grief and opens the way to remembrance. It had to have been the joy of the good news of the resurrection that spilled out and gave the woman and disciples the courage to speak the unfathomable truth. The one who was crucified now lived, even as they struggled with their own intense grief. Such moments reminded them that they were not alone, and the appearances of Christ recorded in other Gospels provided additional help to move their story our story forward. This story and this Sunday is marked with holy humor because we need to remember that on Easter morning, God was laughing, laughing at those who thought death could contain Jesus. On Easter morning, God declares that God will always have the last laugh, the greatest reversal ever. Resurrection has been accomplished. It's worth some laughter because it borders on the ridiculous and absurd, and yet all the same time it's true. It's the bedrock of our faith, the hope to which we cling. We, like the women at the tomb, like the disciples, like Thomas, whose story in John's Gospel is typically read on the Sunday after Easter, are caught between the tension of a story that's unbelievable and yet the one in which we ground our belief. It is good and right, and we should laugh at the very idea of it. Not because we think it's ridiculous, but because our laughter is the only way that we can overcome our fear of what if it is true after all. In our laughter, God shows up with that chuckle and that nod and reminds us that with God, all things are possible. And we laugh again because all things seems too good to be true. The news of resurrection, the promise of eternal life and unmerited grace, it overwhelms us with joy and a laughter, a deep resounding laughter that ripples throughout our whole body. That joy is what leads us to praise and rejoicing, to worship, to a deeper love of God who created this and spun this whole crazy world into being. So this morning, we laugh a little or a lot, in hopes of catching on to some of that divine joy that fills the empty tomb. And to remind ourselves, even in this difficult time of uncertainty, when things may seem impossible, that God is with us. And God is still laughing at the face of that which would otherwise bind us. What good news of great joy, indeed. Amen. This morning, I have some things for you to think about. Funny things about our language. Have you ever noticed that there is no egg in eggplant, no ham in the hamburger, and neither pine nor apple in the pineapple? How about that English muffins were not invented in England, and French fries were not invented in France, or boxing rings that are actually square? Questions to ponder. If writers write, how come fingers don't fing? And if the plural of tooth is teeth, why shouldn't the plural of phone booth be phone beef? If the teacher taught, why didn't the preacher prot? If a vegetarian eats vegetables, what does a humanitarian eat? Go figure this one. Why do people recite at a play, yet play at a recital? Park on driveways and drive on parkways. Or when a house burns up, we say it burned down. Or when you fill in a form, you say you filled it out. 
When the stars are out, they are visible, but when the lights are out, they are invisible. When I wind up my watch, it starts, but when I wind up my sermon, it ends. <laughs> and we're going to join in singing a song you all know, if you're happy and you know it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, shout Amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, shout Amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, shout Amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, do all three. Amen. Always such a fun song to sing. Let us pray. O oh God, it is great to take time to worship today. You really want us to be happy. Keep us from taking ourselves too seriously. By your grace, you set us free from the illusion that we are in control of everything that we are part of. Help us to shed our worries and fears and to take up your gift of a light heart and a joyful spirit. Amen. Joy is loose. In the wiggles of the children. The whispers of the youth. The smiles of the adults. We praise God for this glorious day. Let the praise break forth in the most unlikely places and in silly ways. Joy and praise fill our hearts and in our songs. Let the laughter be deep, for we are God's people. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Way down in the depths of my heart. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart, and I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay, and I'm so happy, so very happy, I've got the love of Jesus in my heart, and I'm so happy, so very happy, I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And we 
light our Christ candle today to remind us that Christ is in our midst and this light shines within us for us to share with all whom we meet. On this Holy Humor Sunday, I welcome you to worship today in the comfort of your own home. I remind you that your being with us is a gift and a true blessing. We worship and we share our joys and concerns in our community of faith, and even those that are held close to our hearts, God knows what we need. I remind you to watch for our announcements coming out through voicemail and Facebook, through the internet and email, and all of those things. And we wish you a joyous day. Alicia, I think we need a challenge this week. What's that? I think we should have a who wore it better challenge. So if you joined us from Facebook or you joined us on YouTube, find our Facebook page, find this video, and post below who wore it better, Alicia or Christopher. I'm going to add a second challenge. I'd like to see pictures of other people oh, with their crazy hair. I so love that. If you have a wig at home, or maybe you've just done a little crazy dye job on your own hair because, well, you it know, could that's happen. the way it is. It could happen. <laughs> we want you to send us a picture and then we can see also who wore it better. Have a joyous day. Happy Holy Humor. <laughs>